boy. Boy, I'll tell you what. Welcome to Dumbasses. Welcome to Dumbasses. Episode one. Season one. Episode one. I'll tell you. Apparently we're live and we've got a we've got a viewer already. A dumb bass viewer. <laughs> but we didn't even know we were gonna go live until about three minutes ago. Isn't that right? Yep, here we are. So here we are. We're going live on the first night. We got a guest this evening. We we are a brand new podcast. And uh what is it? July 31st. July Monday. 31st. Monday, July 31st. And we're thinking our plan is to have a uh, a show every Monday night at 9 p.m. Monday nights at 9. And we're brand new to this whole thing, but I think we've got it figured out enough that we can pull it off for, for a while. And it should be getting better as we go, of course. I think. Maybe that's just It me. will. It will. I'll remember to turn that logo off later. Remember to look at the camera. Talk Remember to the to look viewer. At the camera. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, we're doing this because Tony and I watch a lot of podcasts. I'm sure a lot of you guys do out there. A lot of them are weekly, a lot of them are random, but regardless, we watch a lot of podcasts. And what we have been noticing, man, we're in, we're in central Ohio. We're in Columbus, Ohio. We fish all the, the local central Ohio lakes. I mean, we go up to Lake Erie, of course. We go wherever. But for the most part, we're right here in central Ohio. And and there's not too much reports, not too many podcasts, not many fishing reports. Definitely nobody, you know, does any reporting on the local tournaments. Uh, so that's what we're going to kind of do. We're going to start out by yep. focusing a lot next few years just on local anglers. There's a lot of good fishermen, for God's sakes, that live here in Columbus. Nobody, nobody hears about because we're... We're here, and, and you know, Ohio is not a focus of fishing a, by any we got freaking. We've MLF pro down in Leesburg, Ohio. Oh, we've That's got them. Super Don't get me wrong. We've got guys up here at the uh, Allen Creek that, you know, of course, have fished pro on the way, fishing pros or blah, blah. But I'm just saying, is in general, Ohio is not a hot spot, and we all know that. So we're going to try to bring a little exposure to to old Ohio. Um and of course, we'll 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 cover some of the national pro staff stuff, pro fishing stuff, the MLF and Bassmasters, and all that, and all that kind of thing. Which here, July thirty first, we just had what was it, St. Clair? Yep, the elites, Bassmaster guys went up to St. Clair, which Greg and I kind of hold near and dear. Not only is it a good lake bias, but we did also get to officiate an MLF event up there, but. Um, a couple weeks ago, stage jo six. Joey C. Fuentes, the rookie, so won that, right? That's the second victory in his rookie mm -hmm. season. He's in what, six, do you say sixth place angler of the year? Sixth place angler of the year. The cowboy is what they call him. The guy that wears the big, you guys see him, he wears the uh, cowboy. Apparently he's for guy? real. Once is, you know, anybody, I get lucky a lot of times, one time. We were talking before the show. I don't know if it's ever happened. Not that lucky, though. Sixth place <laughs> as a rookie in Angler of the Year standings. Yeah, I don't know how old the... he is. And that's another thing, I'll be honest, you know, that I'm looking to get out of this. I don't know. You know, we we fish. We don't know everybody's name and favorite color and all this kind of stuff that some of you guys know, but, you know, a hell of a lot more than we do about about, about these guys. <laughs> We just fish, and now we're we're fishing some of these bigger events, and we're starting to learn some of the guys, and of course meet them and fish with them, even in some cases, and um, it's just what we like to do. So we'll probably learn quite a bit more about all this kind of stuff as we go on as well, and especially you guys ought to something I'm definitely looking forward to. You got to uh, you got to uh, like, comment, and tell us what we don't know because we don't know much, and. Drink. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> I should have had a sound effect ready for that, man. I'm going to be, I was thinking about it while I was walking in here to start. I was like, man, I'm going to be like a Picasso, just painting a 
picture of sound effects here shortly. The, the Picasso. Uh, My fingers won't be stopping moving. They'll be talking for me. <laughs> so I'm working on that. But uh, so like I said, later this, this evening, which about a half an hour, 25 minutes or so, we ought to be joined by local legend, really, Michael McClellan. He was a, a Columbus guy. That's actually, he's up in Marion. And he recently moved up to Michigan not too long ago, right on, right outside Elizabeth Ramp. He's only 15 or so minutes to Elizabeth Launch Ramp up there at the river, Detroit River. And we'll have him on for some of his, his advice and all this kind of thing about him. But in the meantime, we ought to do the weather. Tony, did you, do, did you figure out what the weather's going to be like? Yeah, so... <laughs> what's going on with the weather anyway i mean as the saying goes we're in the dog days of summer right so around here we've had a lot of during the day 80 ish it's even climbed up above 80 we've had 90s here in the last couple of weeks it's been freaking hot so everything's hot it's sticky out there which from my experience here i've been back here in ohio for 13 years or so from my experience that means fishing's going crazily good you go out there and just <laughs> i mean it's pretty much a, just a freaking every cast thing for as long as you want to be out there you get tired my your arms get tired from catching especially your thumbs thumb gets all worn out yeah you know so that's what happens here in ohio when it gets hot boy it gets good <laughs> uh <laughs> so obviously we're having a little thunderstorms here and there type stuff, but that's what we're looking at weather-wise. Uh, coming into the week, 79, 82, 84, cloudy, chance of storms Sunday. Maybe that happens you know, in the week. But. It's just going to be standard summer weather here, and we're just starting October tomorrow. I mean August, rather, tomorrow. So we got August coming right up. And when I'm, we're doing the – of course, it makes a big difference. A lot of people don't want to go out there in the rain, so you want to you want to check the forecast. But another big tool that I have been using here for the last four years or so, at least three, I don't know, has been Bass Forecast. You have Bass Forecast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I found that pretty early on in my journey anyway. Um, it's just an awesome app. We use it a lot, not only for the day score, but there's just – a ton of info in there right at the end of your fingers so the day score is that what you said yeah the day so daily you, score daily score whatever they call it right so here just so you guys know what it looks like if you hadn't seen it is what he's talking about i've got columbus pulled up right you see how it says seven today is supposed to be a seven it says tomorrow is a seven so those are the two best days of the week and a lot of that is there's based on a lot of different variables out you know and we're not sponsored by freaking bass forecast or whatever but i'm just saying we do use it when we're looking at the week you know what's going on i think a lot of it is by the barometric pressure and uh but they take all those factors and put them into a comprehensive score for your you know fishing day in your area based on the weather based on all those those variables and kind of gives you a good idea of what you might experience out there i've seen it both ways you There's know it says it's going to be great and it sucks and i think a lot of it has to do with the talent level of me and tony dumb basses yeah we're no uh bass so, masters you know i i like it to say two because it's always a two as far as i'm concerned <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah but anyway, like I say, uh, Joyce Fuentes, he won. Uh, he won with ninety one point eight and ninety one and a half pounds. Luke Palmer was behind him with ninety point six, so he, he he beat him by a whole over a pound, pound and a couple ounces. If you can find him there, I don't know what they've got going next off the top of my head, but I know the MLF's got uh, Saginaw Bay, which starts, I believe, is tomorrow. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know a lot about that place. I really, really don't. I wish I could give a. I wish I could break guess, it down too. I don't. I've never been there. 
But I've heard it's good. A lot of those guys went up there and fished when we were at St. Clair on their off day. Remember? Mm -hmm. So I heard there's good, you know, good, good ass fish. And I heard it's both small mouth and large mouth. And it should be a fun tournament to keep your eye on. Um, I've got some friends that follow this stuff super pretty, pretty, pretty closely. And we'll get some of their opinions on it here as our show goes forward uh, in the future. But anyway let's talk about the lakes see what's going on is that what you want to do yeah well we've got a few contacts in a few different places here all, all these which we're going to consider the main i guess six lakes here in the central columbus area i could put on like deer creek if anybody out there knows somebody that fishes deer creek all the time and would like to send me a text with some dang report information because i I rarely make it down to deer creek have you even been there before no i haven't rocky fork's another one that comes to mind now well that's even further down there if anybody i mean anybody yes. fishes them I'd, we'd love to put them on yeah because people do fish them quite a bit uh but we do have uh delaware lake which is of course i don't know i mean it's it's not really a mini alum creek but it it, it kind of is to me a little bit but um, over at Delaware, they've got a Thursday nighter they got going up there all the time, and I guess it was it was pretty rough fishing. All the water here in the Central Ohio Lake, you know, it's all between. I guess in the morning, if it's been a cool night, you might find in the high seventies, but it's pretty much all eighties and mid eighties. I'm sure you can find some mid to high eighties. So in the eighties, pretty much all the water is, and the Indian or Delaware is pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty much always kind of muddy and murky. We hadn't had any rain, so I imagine it's more clear now that it. We've had a little rain. It's going to be kind of a, a, you know, stained water to say the least. But anyway, up there that last week, I don't think even five pounds won. So it's it's fishing tough right now. Well, I mean, it's the dog days of summer where they, people are hammering them. Five I know, pounds. and like you said, like I just you say said, five pounds like that. That's said, huge. Yeah, you said it like it wasn't much, but. No, I'm just kidding. It's not. I was kidding, too, when I said it was going crazy fishing. <laughs> that's exactly the opposite. That's the opposite. Uh, so, basically, the, yeah. Delaware, as far as it's going right now, that's pretty much it. You know what I'm saying? And then we got Griggs, which, you know, it's below O'Shaughnessy, water, same kind of deal. I know that the Wednesday night guys did not, they'll fish uh, Griggs and then occasionally they'll fish O'Shaughnessy. So they fished uh, O'Shea last week and believe, you know, believe it or not, they had a 12 pound, 10 ounce ba uh, bag last, last, and they fish, I think 6.30 to 9.30. It might be 10, but uh, definitely, I think it's 6.30 to 9.30. I could be wrong in those times, hundred. I've never fished that with them yet, but I really want to at some point. The second place only had five point eight, so that's a little bit more what I would expect. But still, twelve pounds out of out of grit uh, O'Shaughnessy up there. It's kind of a river system lake for those who don't know it. It's just basically a piece of the river. They put a dam in there. It's a little wider, I guess, than a river in some spots. But uh, and up over at Hoover. You know, that's a 9.9 .9 lake. If anybody hadn't fished there, didn't know it. But it's a 9.9 .9 lake up north of the 270 belt line here in Columbus. Water, same deal. Like I said, 85-ish, down to down to 80, basically. Apparently, four four-pounders were weighed last week in their in their Wednesday nighter. Or Hoover. maybe at the third. That was Hoover. Hoover, four four pounders were weighed. The winner had thirteen something. Hoover's pretty too. I like Hoover. Yep, and my guy up there said the fish are just spread all over there, and anywhere from two to eighteen feet all over the place up there. So that sounds a lot like Indian. Indian, same deal, eighty-ish. Well, there. there's not any eighteen feet there. No, no, not not any eighteen feet. Mm -mm. But it's eighty-ish degree water. Indian Lake is a shallow bowl that has couple of holes in it kind of deal a lot of vegetation for the guys that don't go up there a lot um tournament wise they they had a was it the phoenix series yeah 
Phoenix, MLF Phoenix series at Indian Lake. That was July 15th. 15 2 won that. Shout out Zach Mumford if you ever end up watching this. But uh, yeah, 15, they had four bags, 13 better. You tell me. They did. Uh, Buckeye Lake, let's just put it this way they're done with Tuesday nighters. Okay, that means it's so bad there. It's a double. <laughs> I don't know what the other fish do. We're just talking about bass here, but I do know that fishing the Buckeye Lake, pretty much everybody's kind of knows that after a certain point in the year, basically July ish, it just shuts off. So those guys don't even fish them anymore. It's just freaking horrible and there was a year maybe it was two years in my life i spent i fished those tuesdays almost every tuesday but what a shocker i sucked <laughs> <laughs> oh man so we were talking that's pretty much your fishing report for this week not you know i haven't looked ahead to the 10 day or whatever extended forecast to see what's what's going on over there but um in the longer range rather but so we'll just uh we'll have to give you the update on that next week you know and another thing and we're not and once again i'm not sponsored or whatever by these guys but i'll tell you another super good tool man if you guys are looking out there learning kids or even you know adult, anybody that's just look, look, looking to learn man I, I i didn't get into it i'm 47 i didn't get into walk, looking at it until i was about 43 so it's been about four years now the bass university though is just a super good resource tony when when you got that was about when you got into fishing basically. yeah because i haven't i haven't been into bass fishing nearly as long as greg we're talking four years but that was a super helpful thing for a lot of understanding of the baits they do a super in-depth um kind of class style for the those guys that haven't seen it seminar but, almost seminar seminar uh yeah. it, it's something else i enjoyed about it is i found my own anglers that the way that they taught or the things they said made me laugh or that ended up becoming really good teachers um james watson's one that comes to mind uh, worldwide they call him I really like the way that he, he presents things, but that was another thing that I found super cool about it. Well, I like it too. Like I say, it's got all the pros for the most part. There's a couple guys that aren't on there, but for the list of pros, are there's, it's huge. And they all sit up there and they give their, their words, and it's very helpful. They've got it all separated by seasons, water, color, the, all the different variables that you can pick for in the categories or pretty much any bait you want to learn about, they've got some videos on it, so. It's a pretty good tool, especially I have been fishing out of state quite a bit here in the last three years, and it's nice because if you don't know a body, you know, you know, you can do you can do shorten the learning curve quite a bit by by doing some research on those types of lakes or even that specific lake, depending on if they happen to be from there. But regardless, I really I recommend you guys uh, check it out. I think they do a free trial here thing there here now and then, so keep your eye on that. So, anyway, what do we got going here, Tony, with, uh, with uh, you fishing? What are you doing here in the, in the near future? So here, well, we, be, we do a lot of the Tuesday nighters over at Alum. Um, short of that, it's been banging. Oh, well, we got tomorrow is what we got. What am I even talking about? We didn't even talk about Alum when we were talking about the damn lakes because I thought we were going to talk about it together. Last Let's talk week, about it together. Last week, Not yeah. last week, two weeks ago. Well, we didn't fish last week. Why didn't we fish last week, Greg? I was working on getting this podcast thing set up, wasn't I? Well, no, we had boat issues. Well, I had some boat issues. I mean, we could have taken the Phoenix out there, but yeah, I had boat issues. My, We'll talk about that later in the, in the program. We'll talk about what happened to my boat. I don't really want to talk about it twice. But I will say that I did drop it off at Weedas down there in Alexandria, Kentucky this morning. And it should be all fixed up at some point. You know what I'm saying? 
So, uh, but we will talk about that. We can talk about so, but we did finish a couple couple weeks ago. Sure, I'll tell you. Last week that uh, Tyler Berger and CJ Shaver won with eleven pounds, eleven point four eight, is what it says. I think number two was like a little under nine pounds, but they ended up with a little less than twelve. Having a kicker fish is huge right now. Yeah. I think they did pretty good two weeks ago, too. I think they were second. Or I thought they won it two weeks ago. Did they had 16 they, pounds yeah, or something? Yeah, they was them. So those guys. They're, they're on them in the summer right now. As well as you can be on them. Shit, 16 pounds at Alum Creek in an evening tournament is about as good as you can be on them. What is it? Four, four hours? What are we doing? Four? Five hours? Four. Four hours. Four hour Tuesday night or 16 pounds. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty damn good, man. So we got them, we got five uh, two weeks ago, which was a pretty, you know, in my book, the way we're at right now, it's like, that's a pretty damn good thing to have five, you know. And I'm, we just, caught, I'm just trying to catch one at a time at, at this point. Yep. It's been a little rough. And we were, I caught all, all of them on, on a Carolina rig. And we fished some other stuff, you know. I wanted to catch some top water after we had those five. We got them pretty quick. And then I said, well, let's just go try to catch some top water fish, man, right? And I think I fished that fucking spook, spook, spook. Well, we had a couple. <laughs> we, we had a couple top water. They just. We, uh, we did? Yeah. We just, I did catch a little one, didn't I? It was about. Was I had a bite, but we're going to blame. We're going to blame the fish. Its mouth, I don't think, was big enough to get around the bait. So yeah. that's why when I hook set it. <laughs> Yeah. It didn't come in the boat. That's what happened. Yeah. So, you know, Alum Creek is my favorite lake by far around here. And I think a lot I of people. I, would I think that's pretty much. There's a lot of people that really like a Buckeye, man. There's some people that freaking love it. And there's people that like Indian, I think. Like you like. What? I think there's people that like Indian Lake. I just. Punching. If you like punching in top water, I guess Indian of vegetation lily pads super shallow i mean i've had fun there don't get me wrong we used to fish there quite a yeah. bit when we were fishing the, Ohio, the mega best stuff a few years ago you know fishing we were more hoping that's for damn sure we didn't even catch it shit. pishing out there huh? we were pishing <laughs> Whoosh, psh, so we were yeah. trying man this is just, you know, here's the thing about it that i've noticed and i i like i say we watch a lot of podcasts where they get a lot of Info, all like I said, the Bass U, all the stuff on YouTube. Man, everybody says different stuff, you know. And I, I was listening to, uh, it might have been BTL today. But, no, it was maybe, yeah, I think it was with Castle Dine, that one a year ago. But they were, he was talking about, you know, the main thing that all the guys have to do well that they're all very consistently have are, is 100% confident in what they think is going to be the thing that to work. No matter if it is or not, their plan is they, and they have confidence in that plan. And so it's hard, but you know, and why that is because they fish all the time and they, they have had that situation happen again and they know how to make it happen. And so it's, you know, it's just a matter of, of getting out there and fishing, but we're lacking that confidence. <laughs> Currently, but we're out there fishing our asses off, man. Sometimes I think we're learning shit, and sometimes I don't think we are. Oh, yeah. But you know, you just can't say anything going. else about us. We, I will tell you that I obviously feel like you know every single year we are definitely better than we were the last year, which is you know a no doubter. And you, my curve would be a lot different than yours, obviously. Mine went up pretty. What I like to think was steep. Now it's feels like it's flattening out a little bit. But everybody has a little touch of beginner's luck, don't they? The first year, yeah, you know. And so we can get into uh, me and Tony and our our personal story when it comes to fishing another time or maybe later, depending on how much time we got after Mike Mike gets on here. But um, uh, what was I saying? I 
talking about our personal story. Well, yeah, shit, uh, we should uh, let's not forget the the young man. The young man. Oh yeah, yeah. Speaking of local stuff, you know, I've got a local pond that I I go down to and I fish and I just have fun fishing some baits here and there and just slay them because there's so many fish in this little pond. And uh, I go down there, some kids down there fishing, and they were super into it, man. We said we ought to have those kids on. But I, I saw a story. There was a fishing derby here in Pickerington where I where I live that uh, a kid won. What was it? Carson. What is his? Uh, Carson Outdoors Adventures. And he's, I don't know, seven, maybe eight-year-old yeah. kid. And we don't, we don't know this young, young lad, but uh, we just saw the story about it and thought that was really, really cool. It was pretty sweet. He had won this tournament, and he had a trophy, and he added it to his, his uh, shelf of fishing trophies. I don't, what did I count? It was like 13. Oh, he had a bunch of them. 13 fishing trophies. The kid's only like seven. So he's uh his profile picture is him holding he's up an a Ohio boy. Nice sized bass. He knows what he's doing. He knows more than we do. <laughs> That's for sure. Take us out to the pond, show us how to catch some fish. Well, all I know is fishing is fishing, guys. I don't care who's doing it. It's fun. And uh if kids are around here fishing, man, we'll have them on the show and Yeah, we love it so much. We're not great at it and we keep doing it. Carl, I don't know how to say his last name. Shoot, starts with a G, glue gold or something. I don't want to say it wrong, but I just did. So, but anyway, he runs the uh, Harley's Hogs down there in Grove City, which at some point my son's eight years old, Dean. He'll probably want to be on the on the hogs. He's starting to really get into fishing, which is a lot of fun. So, um, uh, here's his mic's texting me. He needs me to send him the link to get on here. He's ready to get on. Mike's a great guy. I fished those Tuesday nighters at Allen Creek for two years with him. And like I said, he just recently moved to uh, Michigan. And, and in no way, like I said, man, we were not planning on being live today. But we just said, screw it. We had it all hooked up. We said, let's just push we're this button and see what it, what it does. And it, it seems to be working. We're, we'll find out later. But... To say that we're not 100%, probably a good bet. <laughs> I would say probably like a really good bet. So, anyway, what do you got, Tony? Um, let's talk about. Why don't you tell me what you would throw right now at Allen Creek when we go out there tomorrow night? What are you going to do tomorrow? Oh, uh, sea uh, rig. I mean, he just told you we caught R5 on a sea rig. So, obviously, when I can, I will throw that. Um, I'll have some sort of top water tie it on. Probably going to go with a fr popping frog, what I'm feeling, um, and a Ned rig. You know what I think we ought to get back to throwing more often is uh, just swim baits. We used to throw swim baits four years ago, man. We threw a finesse swim bait. And Jesus. I mean, I have to say probably 90% of my fish that you were caught on it. And Jen and I both had a lot of success. As What was that, 18? Maybe? No. 19? 19. Well, all I know is I've been thinking about that. And I've also been thinking about how you know, to use that with live scope. I watched a guy fishing for crappie with uh, a finesse minnow like that, and um, it was awesome. I'll tell you that. But uh, anyhow, here we go. We got Michael just showed up, and he's in the green room. Well, he's in the green room. So uh, let's bring him on in here. Without further ado, Michael. Oh, wait. You know what? Wait a minute. Before I bring him in here, I forgot to tell you guys something. Boom. I'm Tony. Well, I'm Greg. Next time we'll do that at the beginning. And we're dumb bastards. <laughs> we are dumb bastards. All right. So let's bring in Mike. 
Cause I hope this works. What up? Hey, what's up? Not too much, Michael. There, look at that. Sounded good. You can hear us well, yes? I, I can hear you guys. Awesome. Nice. Well, we can hear you too. We don't even hear an echo. Yeah, good. I don't know, man. Yesterday we were just, I think I was at the end of my, we did a practice run yesterday. And it just didn't seem to uh, work out. I was kind of panicked, man. We got home and I was like, we got to figure this out. We had a little bit of overload. We had like an Maybe. hour. We had an hour and I'm like, we got to figure this out. And I, I'll be honest with you, man. Right before you showed up, I was like, we might have to cancel this. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But we tried one show. thing. I did one Man. thing, and the first try it worked. So anyway, we're here. But uh, welcome to Dumbasses. Yeah, glad to be here. I'm glad you're here too, man. All right, so you know what, Mike? We just, at the very last second, I don't know if you saw that, but the very last second, we decided we were just going to hit go live. Right? Oh, great. And, you know, so we are just, we went ahead and went live, so this actually is live on YouTube right now. So, wow look at that how about that we didn't expect to do that until middle of september but it, the, there was a button right there and when you know how it goes <laughs> when there's a button you have to click it I mean. <laughs> so anyway so i'll tell you what why don't we uh why don't you just tell us a little bit about michael mcclellan uh grew up in ohio currently live in michigan i uh, got into bass fishing about five years ago um, really got into tournament fishing, I guess, about two years ago and been trying to hit it up harder more and more. I uh, work as a mortician during the day, um, Batman at night, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he works Other as than a, that, I, that's a, a mortician. That's about it. Yeah, that's an interesting job, to say the least. Wouldn't you think? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about this. So, how do you wrap your mind around that? You just, how'd you get into that? Uh, my family tricked me. Family tricked me. Okay. I'm sure you get, I'm sure you get <laughs> used I got into to it. it. The family was in it. And then, uh, well, me and my wife decided she wanted to move back to where she was from. So, we moved back up to Monroe, Michigan. Monroe is right, right by the old Elizabeth ramp. Oh yeah, about about twenty minutes just south of that, so it didn't take me long to get there. Yeah, that's perfect. That's why it was like that for a while. I moved up here. Yeah, that's my new stopping stop to go fishing up there. Apparently, you yeah. got an awesome place right there, man. So, what what got you into fishing though? Family were always into it, or you just liked fishing as a kid, or what? My grandma. Oh yeah. Yeah, my grandma was a huge fisherman. It was a uh, so when, back when grandparents were grandparents and would keep you for weeks at a time, no questions asked, we were just at the lake. So when she wasn't making me constantly pick weeds that nobody would ever see and do all kinds of chores around the island and just slave driving me, um, we would go fishing. And I just, uh, that's all we ever did. We would stop and visit Amish people and then we would go to the island and go fishing. That's what, yeah. that's what my child was with my grandma. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> That is awesome. So what, what made you take the, what got into your head to take the jump to get into, uh, we get club fishing and, and, uh, tournament fishing. Well, when I would sit out on the, we had a house on Indian Lake when I would sit out in the mornings on Saturdays and we would go fishing and you'd see the bass boats go by and you're just like, I'm like, man, I wish that was like the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. So I would be zipping by in the mornings and I was like, man, I'm going to do that one day. And then, like, I wanted to bass fish so bad, but I didn't have a, a bass boat, so I had Grandma's pontoon boat. So I would take into little areas in there and drop anchor, and I didn't know anything about bass fishing, and I would just try to figure it out. And then when I realized I needed to learn more, I was watching YouTube videos, and everyone kept saying, you know, join a club. So I joined the club uh, as a boater. Now I probably, I'm a co-angler more with the club just because I'm still out here trying to learn. But mm -hmm. there's a lot more involved to it. When I think I initially get, I initially thought there was a little bit. <laughs> the, more, the more you learn, the less you know. Yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah, that is how you feel. I mean, <laughs> Jesus, man, I can't. 
Remember the last time I went out and had a carefree outing? <laughs> we go out and have something happens every damn time we go out. <laughs> yeah. Between that's for sure. Boats and the weather. Yeah. There's it's always, always something. There's always something. So you uh you moved up to Michigan and you started fishing. Now you're now you're fishing as a boater in the BFLs. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think he of planned that? On that? I signed up as a co angler and they said there might not be enough boat spots and I wanted to fish the tournament. So I was like, Well, I guess we're bringing the boat. So that's oh, yeah. how that happened. But I've enjoyed fishing them. Uh, the best tournament of my uh, fishing career was two tournaments ago in the first BFL, but I showed up seven minutes late and oh, yeah, every one of those counted. So. Oh, yeah. Did <laughs> you hear about that? <laughs> so, no, no, I did. Tell me this story. So what? run that back by. What we, might, we might be going into the d- dumb bass moment right now. Yeah, maybe. Uh-oh. We might be having it. This sounds like a good uh, dumbass moment. Let's hear it. So I'm fishing on St. Clair with my co-angler, good guy. And we're talking, listening to music, doing well, catching fish. And, you know, we just can't upgrade too much, but we're we're hitting fish really well. And so we had our eye on the clock, and we had a drop-dead time, and we got right to that drop-dead time. We hit the old, uh, one more song. Well, first of all, you were up in St. Clair. Yeah. And we yeah, shot went in. Friend down there at elizabeth right so about yeah i think i when i when i looked down i was about 38 miles away 38 holy crap all right yeah go ahead and i realized how deep into st Clair i was and i realized that maybe i'd made a mistake when it took me 15 minutes to get back down to the mouth and i'm like this didn't add up i thought i was right at the mouth and i felt kind of like eh. and then i pulled up to a spot actually you showed me about that as a uh like it looks like that church thing, that white building. Yeah. And oh I was like, God, I wonder were, if I got time. You went up past throw. that. I was like, let me see if I got time to throw something in. You I went at my phone, three o two, and I was like, oops. So I'm gunning it, and I can see the ramp, but it's just far enough away that I was, I, I was pushing as hard as that motor would go. Yeah. And I pulled it, so I'm throwing the uh, thing up, and he's like, "What boat number are you?" I think I was like eighty nine or something like that. And he goes, "Yep." seven minutes late and like he didn't even have to look at his watch none of that and i was like oh man i was so nervous they were going to announce that i was like had like a late penalty at the way in i'm like not in front of like all these tens of people i i, I don't know if i can stand <laughs> yeah. and then they put, put it up online i looked at it i got second to last which was all right what oh really yeah but well they took that weight deduction so i had five fish for three pounds <laughs> oh my god i didn't realize that that's a that's a skill in itself man. that that is a certified <laughs> five certified fish for three pounds there. i mean that's not everybody can pull that off <laughs> so yeah that was my uh my dumb bass moment since i've been up here trying that, fishing. that was it i didn't even we didn't yeah. even gotten to that part yet but we just knocked that right yeah, out that would that fit in there <laughs> Yeah, man. I would like I said. I would say I didn't realize you were that far north. For God's sake, so it took you 15 minutes to get to the white thing. That sh- it didn't look that far away because we kept looking. I'm like, I'm, I think I'm right where we normally fish. I'm think I'm just just north of like the dumping grounds on the Canadian side. So I'm like, I'm just right here. Yeah. No, nope. we turned around going. and we were pushing for a minute, and I'm like, this is taking longer than I thought it would just to get to the, the Miracle Mile. And luckily, the Miracle Mile wasn't bad, so I was pushing through that as well. We just just didn't have enough juice in the nitro, you know? Yeah. She was built for for it, not speed. Well, and what were you doing in fishing in that? You had five fish on what? Did you, yeah, did you say a tube? Uh, I had I had one on a tube. Most most of them were on drop shop. Yeah. All right. Well, and so that was the first BFL. Yeah. Well, we had an interesting pre-fish for the second one, didn't we? yeah so i'm gonna okay i had a lot of people ask me about what happened to my boat and i just tell them whatever you know i'm just like whatever dude there's just some issues i don't really feel like talking about it but i feel like going ahead and telling the story right now so then i can just tell people to watch this you know what i'm saying yeah so let's just put it this way 
I didn't get to fish the BFL on Saturday because I had boat issues on Sunday. <laughs> Let's just say that. But what ended up happening was, and it's a very, very common problem. Uh, you know, when I took it, I took it down to Weedas this morning, you know, to have it fixed. And he said, what did your screw come? did? He said, everybody's screws coming out. So that, what was it called? A t uh, the trim sensor screw, pin screw oh, or something like that. that. Right? She froze. Oh, there it is. Is that what it was called, man? Yeah. So me and Michael are out pre-fishing and, and you know, we're, we're starting to go places. We're just, it's early. It's pretty early. Wasn't it like 10 o'clock when we went out there? Yeah. About I 10. remember I had my wife keys. Oh yeah. We get to the ramp and it's an hour drive up to where we went. I we went up to the mile, mile ramps from his place. It's about an hour, 50 minutes. And we get up there, man. And it's, <laughs> he's like, oops, I got the keys to the truck. His wife was not happy about that. But anyway, <laughs> he, he survived it. So we get in there, fish around, blah, blah, blah. We go over to uh, Bell's Hump over there. Mm -hmm. Not to mention there was like six footers the entire day. It was definitely three to four with an occasional came over the bow <laughs> when we were sitting still. Huh? Yeah, it, was, it was rougher than we thought. It rained the night before, remember? Yeah. And that, that all did kind of clear out towards the end of the day. But um, regardless, we get all middle of the way. I kind of stopped if something felt weird. Remember? I was like, something's yep. weird. And I kept going. We get all the way out there. And then we get out there and the trim won't go up or down or something. And we're out here in Canada waters and we can't, you know, trim's not working. And Long story short, it was a little bit of a panicky moment, but it was kind of like, what are we going to do? So we fished, and we ended up catching some fish, <laughs> right? We, we kept yeah. moving. We, we, were, we were dialing them in. We found the area that we needed to fish, I thought. Is that where you went, by the way? I was real close to that area. All right, well, we'll get into that. But regardless, it's not happening, man. And so then we were like, all right, let's head back. So I can get into some reception so I can call and I can get a part from somebody. You know what I mean? So we get all the way into over the dumping grounds in the American side. And I'm getting reception. And I call up a guy, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I found a part. And it was over there in Monroe, over there where Mike lives. And we were so we were like, well, we'll just set. They closed at 7. So I was like, I paid for the part. I'm like, so, so your screw broke. And you went to a hardware store because you thought no, well, wait, 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 we haven't gotten there. This is from an actual marina where they have parts, oh. and he had the actual part. I called this other place; they didn't have any. I wrote it in my phone, and he said, "And I'll tell you what: if you can't find the part, you can just go to any hardware store and get that five sixteenth inch, you know, screw, and it just use any screw." Is what he told me. So I'm like, <laughs> "All right, well," but I called them, and they had the part. So I'm, I'm like. We're just going to, you know. Man, you can just use anything. We'll just go to, the, all we got to do is get the boat in, and then we'll go get the part, and we'll be good to go, and I'll be able to fish tomorrow. And so we, we decided to fish a little bit more because we were like, this shit's all taken care of, you know. No problem. So uh, anyway, we, get, we go in, and guess what's happening? It's not going up, right? The trim's not going up. Mike goes and gets the truck. I'm here screwing with it. It's not going up at all. It's fully all the way down. It's not going up. And uh, we're over there at that Elizabeth ramp. And we're trying to figure this out. And so I called. It was only like 4.30. So I called Weedas. And I got Marty on the phone. And he FaceTimed me and was walking me through how to get the motor <laughs> up. He said, <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, he said, you got to unloosen this thing here. And I said, okay, I got it. And he said, after you unloosen that, it should, it, it'll release it and you'll be able to pull it up. And so I'm like, all right. And this thing's about, it's a big one. It's about an inch, inch wall, the slot for the flathead screwdriver. And I've got this really thin screwdriver. And I'm putting it in there. It's, just, <laughs> and it's plastic. It's not metal. So it's just chewing it up. Shaving it all. Yeah. And I'm like, God dang it. I got to go to a hardware store, man. And <laughs> 
<laughs> Luckily, there was one that was 1.5 mile away. So I went to the hardware store with the boat with the trailer on the back. <laughs> and he's sitting in the boat baking in the sun. And I got the damn thing. I came back. What? It took me 15 minutes, maybe. It was pretty. And the guy at the ramp was, the, you know, the guy at the pay booth. I just saw you, didn't I? I'm like, yeah, man. Clearly, I, <laughs> whatever. So we get back, unloosen it. <laughs> then we couldn't get it up. After I got it up, I opened the thing up. My lower unit Greek oil was spilling out into the lake. Big ring of that color. And we couldn't get it out. Long story short, man, Michael jumped. We got the boat turned around in the shallow with the back towards the thing. So he didn't we, could... tell me, you know, we drug the skid across the ramp. <laughs> we tried to pull it out at first. Yeah, we tried to pull it out. <laughs> and we, of course, dragging the shit out of the lower unit. He was like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> no, no. And so then he gets down into his underwear, dude. Jumps in the water. Hercules pulls it up. So you're telling me. He might forget when he's supposed to be in, but he'll jump in the water to raise your engine for you. Man, we didn't, we didn't have a choice, did we? We didn't have a choice, and I kept, like, looking at, like, Greg thinking he was going to do it because it was his boat, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, you're 14 years younger than me. Like, 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 an come on, amount man. of time. <laughs> yeah, I started getting like that, well, you were in the Marine Corps look. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you like so shit like this, man. <laughs> Yeah, I got to do it, so I hopped in. <laughs> yeah, he was going for it. And I appreciate the hell out of that because that fixed it. I mean, that got us, uh, us up. And you didn't want to do it. And so at that point, we're still thinking we're golden. Granted, it was a pain in the butt to get the boat. We got it on the trailer, got everything, we're fine. And we're like, but all we got to do is go pick up this part and put that thing in there. And I, we pull it out, I look, sure as hell the damn pin's out, you know. And uh, anyway, we, we get over, we drive the hour down to the place, pick up the part from the lady. The guy had already left, so she had the part for me, and it was completely the wrong screw. And that was from the part number, right? Yeah, from yeah. the part number, the, the, the <laughs> dumb guy told me, wrong part number. And then, so I'm like, well, I guess we'll just go to the heart. We drove all the way in there 20 minutes over to Lowe's or whatever it was. Get a part. We're like, all right. We got this. <laughs> All we got to do is put this in. Start to put it in. It's going. Snap. The head popped right <laughs> off. The head was at that moment, but he was probably just going to go on home that night. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Five minutes later, I was like, okay, I'm just going to go on. Oh, he's been he's been mad about every, it. Every boat that. owner knows that feeling. Like, you know what, guys? I think I'm going to just go on home. <laughs> well... That sucked because I, uh, I had to call him after the meeting and everything. If I, you know, but like I said, man, I, I thought that we had the, the right screw. The guy, whoever the, whoever that dude was, really gave me a lot of bad information. Sounds like it. But anyway, yeah. Well, you, you called him near close, man. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go pick up a G thirty six C, and uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. So that happened. So anyway, you fished that, that. So what happened out the, the next day then? So I went up right where we were. Um, and I always use like the windmills as like a reference point. Pushed out. It felt like my co-angler was putting on a clinic. So that, that was depressing. Um, and I would, I'm switching How over. Was he, and, what was he getting? I mean, he was, he was, he probably, he probably caught about 20 fish. Easy. Really? I mean, he caught a lot of shorts. Um, a lot of and what? Then he caught a lot of shorts, but he, but then at the end of the day, he he didn't catch any fish that could help him, so he was just throwing them back because he he had keepers, but they were so we kept we could find like the little guys, but I just couldn't get a bite, and the two good ones that I had uh, got off, so I had to. Oh. Walk into the weigh-in with my uh, one fish, but I felt better. I thought he was a little little dink. Came in at two and a half, so I was like, "Yeah, that's Better. right." But so you only got <laughs> one all day. So what? You, did you catch a lot of fish? <laughs> Say that again. Did you catch a lot of fish? Just short ones. I probably caught about eight short ones. Really? What were you doing? Hmm. Were you not drop shot? I was. What yep. was the difference? I don't know. I did. I, when I came back home, I watched some YouTube videos. And I'm like, there's something going on. 
because and I realized that I'm gonna I'm gonna try a new new idea. I'm gonna switch over to braid, going into a floral leader carbon instead of just straight running floral for my drop shot. What color and was I that? Learned, was that I remember that? What was what was that line? That line that I used uh, is the Berkeley Invisalign. Oh, it looked kind of blue, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So you switched over. Right. And for, I guess the biggest reason is I, I think I, I could be losing a lot of fish on the drop. So by throwing that in there and that braid floats, you'll see that action more if something's grabbing it on the way down. And I'm like, you know what? Solid. So and I, I've gone out and I've actually bought a uh, drop shot like rod. You know what I mean? Instead of just getting the old uh, medium heavy special at Bass Pro, I went out there and so I'm like, yep, I'm gonna be doing a lot of that. So I'm gonna be interested to see if the changes make any difference. What'd you get? Uh, gosh, I can't remember. Well, I'll well, have to go look. I apologize. No, that's cool. So, what 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 floro what floro uh, liter weight are you looking at? You know, pound test. Go down to eight. I would definitely do that. And I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Don't be scared of going and trying six and seven because that water's so clear up there. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the, apparently it helps. Now, I had eight huh. when we were fit. You know. Six is scary. Yeah. Six but... is scary, but it's a lot less scary with the drop shot so, than yeah, that. Yeah. I'm scared. It'll be my luck. Well, you just got to have that drag set. Yeah, it's right? all about having the drag set, right? Very well. That's pretty much the whole deal. I'm pretty positive. Yeah, as long as it can pull that line out without busting the knot, you're fine, right? Yeah, I mean, I could be wrong, but I... But it's I, still six pound, right? I, <laughs> On the other hand of it, it's still <laughs> six pound. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was throwing six pound on those damn jerk baits after I fished with... Yeah, we we used to throw the six pound on those jerk baits and... Lose them. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. would do that, and we'd throw them, all right, they'd be gone. But, uh, yeah, definitely, that's the way to go, bro. I switched over to my drop shot with a braid about, I guess, four years ago. And it's so much yeah. more sensitive. And granted, you have to, when you go to, like, Erie, when you're fishing the rocks, you're going to have to retie that leader if you just have one rod, especially quite a bit. But yeah, you get you get good at those line-to-lines, whatever one you're using. Yeah, you get good at it. And it only takes... Oh, yeah, I'm fairly decent at them. Yeah, Tony, man, Tony used to take them. Take, used to take the boy a minute. It used to. Oh, my gosh, man. I wish we had videos of me tying knots back in the day. Oh, if you can't tie a knot, tie a knot. Oh. What? I said, if you can't tie a knot, tie a lot. Yeah. Something, man. He was tying a lot, all right. Oh, I was tying 20, a lot. Oh, 20, hell yeah, I was. 20, <laughs> 20 minutes of tying. He would break off. He's like, all right, see you in 20, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got that down quite a bit under now. Yeah. After you get enough finger cramps, you figure out you need to tie those knots quicker. See? Yeah. <laughs> for sure. So is drop shot something that's new for you, relatively speaking? I would say last year, like I said, well, there was a guy in the club, uh, uh, Joe Farkas. He, he's kind of one that opened my eye up to, like, the drop shot and, like, how, how do you go smallmouth fishing and, like, how to actually, like, look what my graph means. It's like I said, it's weird. I went out there in the last couple of years and just completely had no idea. You know what I mean? We went from what we just sat on the dock, and I knew if I threw it far enough with Grandma, I'd hit a catfish. But that was about it, to, like, looking at my my graphs. And Joe actually came out with me one time on Lake Erie, spent a lot of time going over and showing me the drop shot and things like that. So I got a lot of confidence smallmouth-wise. I haven't really used it for a largemouth, but for going for smallmouth, it's definitely my go-to. Yeah, it definitely is a... I mean, it's my number one for smallmouth. I'm a let me use this bait for 20 minutes and then I go to a drop shot. But I always try something new. Drop, <laughs> shot, drop shot's something highly new. effective. I'll yeah. tell you what you need to get is especially in those lakes. Obviously, you need to. You know what? If you can remember, text me in the morning before I go to work, mm -hmm. so to tell me to grab that active target. Oh, okay. I'll send that to you because you need. You're living up there, man. He's got to have it. You got to have active target. It is tournament fishing up there have to yeah i mean that's have to you don't have to i mean but you're you just your efficiency level goes up through the roof once you get it that's that's what i've told people i said to me it, i don't think it necessarily makes people a better fisherman but it saves you a lot of time on tournament day like when we're out there we're not seeing fish you don't fish there right yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, there's no fish. Get the hell out of there. Now, you will see with that active target is a little less defined than the pan optics. So you got to spend a little more time looking at the bottom to make sure that stuff's not moving. Being up there, MLF, stage six. Because they get down there at the bottom, you can't see them even on pan optics sometimes unless they move. And then that's what I'm saying. If you guys just kind of keep your eye on it. But if you remind me about that in the morning, I'll get it sent out to you. All right. So what is your favorite lure? Oh, well, I'm a, I'm a shaky head monster. That's like, if I'm going out, I'm, I'm throwing a shaky head. That's, I love it. I fell in love with that last year. Got a lot of confidence with it. Had a lot of success with it. I love it. Well, with me, we, we fished it a lot. Yeah. Last year. And I got, I, I kind of got into it too. I didn't fish a ton of uh, shaky head until we started fishing them. We, yeah. We were crushing 10, 12 inch bass. <laughs> I mean, a lot of 11, 11 and a half. I used to with the shaky head, I'm, I'm at least get five. You yeah, know I mean, I've had a couple of good, good sized ones with it, but I usually feel like, as far as like making sure I can get just five in the boat, that shaky head's going to put at least five in there. You know, I, when it comes to shaky head, and every time I think of shaky head, they, I can't not think of the Wiggins brothers, Jesse and Jordan Wiggins. Those guys are shaky head masters, and I'll tell you, I, I fished with Jordan Wiggins this year at uh, Chickamauga on the last day of the Toyota series. Guess what he fished all day long? And he, he I met him. We, we got, we both qualified for day three. We were both, I think, in seventh place or something. And so we fished together. And he's like, I'm just standing here. I said, he said, I got an eight, eight pounder yesterday. It's the only reason I'm standing here. And I said, yeah, well, would you catch him on shaky head? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, and I've seen different guys fish it different ways. Like I fish tournaments. So there was two guys that I fished with. There was one guy at Alum. I saw him what, that Colbert I always talked to you about. Yeah. And it was just boom, hitting him there. And then at Rich, the guy in the club, he was showing me how to fish more like around rocks and things like up on Lake Erie. And then I love my favorite place to throw it is around bridges or anywhere there's some current and they got like that current break where you can throw it up there and just let it carry it right on past. If it does that nine times out of 10, like, when I took my daughter out, I know if I hit these bridges up here, I'm going to go ahead and catch fish so that way she can have a good time and we're not just staring at each other for three hours and she's wondering what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Shaky head's awesome, that's for sure. Well, that's cool. I uh, I like uh, I like fishing shaky head. You don't fish them up. I, I don't do a lot of sh shaky head. I do a lot of weightless Texas rig worms. I like that, but... Obviously, they're not dropping to the bottom nearly as fast or staying there. So what do you got up next, Mike? Uh, I got the next BFL coming up here on the 12th. Are you, the, uh, fishing one. Is it, are you joining a club up there? You should probably find a club up there, huh? I don't know. Um, there's enough guys that I fish with from the club. Yeah. That I with, you know what I mean, that well, they come up and fish, and then I, I fish with them, and I've got a lot of fishing buddies around here. And just with having like my two kids right now, it's kind of hard to really commit. Oh God, yeah. Just doing it. Where I can, I can fish the five BFLs, you know, so that just makes it easier for me. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna fish the next one, man. That's, you know, that's the 13th or the 12th or something. That's right at when Jen's supposed to be giving birth or having a new son. How about that. Well, you be. So uh, probably not going to fish that, depending on what happens with that, of course. If it comes early, maybe I will. Just take him with you. Yeah. Get but I got to get, you know, we got to have a day, <laughs> day or something practice. Yeah, we'll take him. Two field bones across we'll the water on the bass boat. Yeah, we'll just strap him to your chest so you can look at the live scope. Put no a camera. <laughs> <laughs> get used to it, kid. Yep, get him used get to it early. Hat. So I don't know what I'm going to do next, but I'm just, I'm just chilling for a couple of weeks. We kind of just spent a lot over the last week and a half getting this stuff together. Yep. Now, as you can see, we're total wizards with graphics. <laughs> so we're going to be competing with Joe Rogan's podcast in no time. I mean, we already have one viewer. We had three at one point. We got two likes. We got two likes already. We don't even know what we're doing. We got two likes. We got two likes, bro. It's over. Mail us a check. <laughs> <laughs> that's all i can say where's the check <laughs> so anyway gonna be sneak mails now what's that 
So YouTube's gonna be sending you emails now. They better be. They better be sending me some damn plaques. Three viewers on our first live show. We didn't expect to go on until three minutes before. Boom. That should be a plaque. <laughs> yeah. <we're... laughs> so, all right. Well, I appreciate you coming on, Michael, being our first guest, man. We really appreciate it. Like I say, we're just literally trying to figure out what we're doing. And it was a fun show. Good having you Anytime. On. If you uh, want any information on the BFLs and things up here, hit me up. I will do that. And uh, I'll be up to see you here pretty soon. All right. All right, brother. Good to see you. Thanks, Hi to Mike. the family and all that stuff. Have a good night, man. You as well. All righty. Bye bye. Peace. So there's Michael. Michael McClellan. Some, some Not to be there. confused with Michael McClellan, who's on the pro staff or pro tour, currently in last place in the points. But that is not our boy, Michael McClellan. That's fun, though, huh? Yeah, yeah. Sounds like he, he might have some more stories, though, for sure, huh? He's got some stories. He's got some more things. I think there's more dumbass moments that he didn't want to talk well, about. Well, he had two dumbass moments there. One with he, me. And then leaving the keys, see? Taking the keys with Oh, him. that was a double whammy. I don't know if you heard his wife in the background there. She said, yeah, she was mad. <laughs> did you hear? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I didn't hear that. But that was a double whammy. <laughs> whammy. All right. Well, we got through the first show, everybody. I appreciate that one viewer for staying in there. I got a feeling it's my woman, Jen. Thank you, honey. What we need to do is figure out how to open up this chat thing, and apparently there's people that can chat, and but we'll figure out that stuff. Oh, out. we got to figure out still, huh? I think we did a pretty good job for our first show. In the meantime, freaking catch some fish. If anybody, you know... E email us and, and yeah, we will be doing this um every monday night 9 p.m every monday night i was gonna say you know pictures of what you've been catching and all that kind of stuff email us cool. any funny stories any kind of dumb, content you think would be good moments, we'd appreciate it dumb ass moments are always appreciated there's always t never enough like, and like comment and subscribe guys please do that Oh, look, there's somebody. Oh, my gosh, Dean was on there. <laughs> I think he said fart. Oh, he did. He did. It's on the bottom there. All right. Well, okay. Guess, guess we'll wrap it up here. All right, folks. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Dumbasses out.